And now, live from the studios of Freedoms Phoenix, Ernest Hancock. Welcome back to Declare Your Independence with me, Ernest Hancock, here in Phoenix, Arizona. Hey, from the beautiful studios of Freedoms with an S, freedomsphoenix.com. And I have my special guest on is Charlene B. She's Global Release Coordinator for Zeitgeist, moving forward. And we just started getting into some goodie at the end of the last segment. I'll just start us off with this. Is... Am, are my rights being violated or do I even have them? That's a whole nother thing. But, you know, uh, is it a bad idea to force me to have clean air and water and so on? You know, sus- su- sustainment of the species. I mean, you know, you'd think that would be in the we'd rather category. But, you know, the reason it's not that I'm against that. And Charlene, as I'm looking at what we have now, you know, there are people that want to take care of my air and my water and my food. They're called the EPA and the FDA and the CDC and the state departments of environmental qualities and so on. And then, then you get into, okay, we want to change the weather patterns or, or chemtrails. Are they good or bad? And who decides? And, you know, collective problems, collective solutions. And I'm just, I'm just very, I'm very worried to give the authority to someone, no matter how many shiny badges they have, how many letters after their name, how much education they got, for them to decide what is best for me. And I'm, I, what I really would prefer is a society based on what was the original promise. That's why this show is called Declare Your Independence. Because to, if you're going to have any kind of a collective force, a monopoly on force, because that's what government is. It is a monopoly. You know, we get to do things that you don't. You know, we, we're not treated, you know, uh, the same morality code as an individual because we're the government. Okay, we're a collective with a shiny badge and the always available gun because it comes down to force or threat of force. And we're going to do what we have to do, too. But the promise was for America and what made us so powerful so quickly was the promise was the defense of our individual rights against aggression. But it's got to the point to where which was inevitable is that the entity that was supposed to protect me against aggression has become the aggressor. In, the, in every sense of the word. So I'm going, okay, so I understand we can agree on what the problem is, but the solution is to have an entity that is subject to a vote of majority. I mean, it, it, I mean, would you, you know, put it to the vote of a majority and what if they're wrong? Okay, everything that you just described is assuming you're operating through a political and therefore a monetary system, since politics is money right now. No, I'm for just leaving me alone. I'm for just leaving me alone. Charlene, don't don't mistake me. I'm an anarchist. I'm for just leaving me. That's just a promise that they made. I'm for like, I don't think government ever, ever, no collective ever keeps their promise. Okay, please be clear that the tenets of the Venus Project have nothing to do with a political decision. It's a scientific decision. Right now, everything that benefits our lives, from a pencil you use to your eyeglasses to a car to this phone that we're using, is technology. It isn't political. Politicians don't know how to solve problems. Technologists do. But how is that imposed? We have never used scientists and technology to make a decision about the best scientific technological way to use energy on our planet. Okay, that then, isn't a political decision. Then that someone says, I don't want to do that. How is it imposed on them? When the common life ground truth is that we need to preserve our Earth's resources so that we can all live and survive in a quality of life with clean air and clean water, then it isn't a matter of being infringed on your freedom. Even if you have your own little property, you can't sue your way into clean air. It's just not going to happen as long as we're under a pop. Look, Ernest, I was involved in many activist movements. I protested the Iraq war. I've been a part of environmental movements. Heck, I worked at Brave New Films, a part of Walmart, the high cost of low price, Iraq for sale, the war profiteers. I've been an activist my entire adult life. And yet none of those movements address the underlying problem, which is the monetary system. So as long as there's a monetary system, we're going to continue to have war. It's too profitable. We're going to continue to have poverty, stratification. We're going to continue to see the pillaging of our earth because there's too much money in it this way. Now, if we have to wait for a biosocial collapse or an economic collapse, like you refer to on your ads, well, so be it. And if anyone can come up with a better way that takes the earth 
carrying capacity into account using our highest technology. Please, we're not claiming to have the corner on truth here. But I'm telling you, I've been out there in the activist and progressive movement, and there isn't any other movement addressing this. They're all well-intentioned, anti-war, clean air, all of these different groups, but none of them are addressing the underlying cause. Now, when I was asked to come on this show, I was asked to come and talk about the global relief. We've gotten off tangent, and that's fine. I know these have been questions you've had about the movement, and there's definitely many forums for this to be discussed in detail. But since time is short, we only have a few minutes left. Since the reason I was brought on was to discuss the release, I would like to bring up... Some I don't know what they told you, but I definitely was going to talk about this. But I think we yeah, we understand... No problem, but I, I think we like understand each release. other. You are welcome to promote the release of the movie. Please do. Okay, well, it's not as much promoting as, as explaining what's really happened here. Um, when I worked at Brave New Films and we released Walmart, it was the first in this kind of pioneering distribution model of going directly to people, bypassing the big Hollywood studios and releasing it directly to the public. Brave New Films did it by selling a DVD for $10 and encouraging people to host screening parties, even in their own homes, in community centers, in their society, uh, community. With this release, the way Peter wanted to do it was to make it available to the Zeitgeist Movement chapters around the world and to go get a theater, a public theater, not a house screening party, and then promote it and uh, go ahead and, and, you know, screen it in their, in, their, in their community. Well, we thought it would start with about 30 maybe around the world, and we exploded to 335 theaters in 60 countries and 30 languages alone. The total number of screenings, because many of these theaters had week-long theater runs or multiple screenings, exceeds a thousand as far as the time the movie was shown total. Um, some of the really noteworthy examples of this release are um, Malak, our Palestinian coordinator, is doing a screening on the al Daheshi refugee camp in the West Bank. We also have a screening in Singapore, which isn't easy to get a movie into. We have a huge screening in Goa University in India of 2000. These are places that no Hollywood studio could ever get us into. Um, very remote. And we have a screening in Mongolia. And this is all due to the efforts of the Zeitgeist Movement um, chapter coordinators, many of them doing it at their own financial risk by renting the theater, not knowing if they would be able to recoup their costs. Many of them renting and then giving tickets away for free. Um, so the dedication from the Zeitgeist Movement members has been inspiring to see what they can do. We use the joke of it's the best money can't buy, which is the title of one of Jacques Fresco's books. Um, we also, in Italy, had the arguably the biggest TV celebrity, Paolo Bonolis, Bonolis, attend the Rome screening and publicly express his love for the movie. And he's dedicating an entire episode of the most popular show in, in uh, Italy, 8 million viewers to a whole, a whole segment on the movie and the movement. So the response globally has been um, a wild success. And the film goes online January 25th. It's available for free to download, to watch online. There's also a physical five, a $5 DVD that Peter sells, which is his only source of income and a very low profit margin because it's beneath commercial rates. Most people sell their DVDs for $15 or uh, Charlene, I, I want to share with you something you may not know. We're par far more supportive of individuals doing whatever they want to support this than you think. Here at Freedom's Phoenix Workshop, we have silk screening and printing and a video and radio studio and sign production and all that. And a lot of the Zeitgeist guys come here to use our 311 stack duplicators. They We can make between three and 500 DVDs an hour. They've come here and made, they're here probably twice a week. And they make Zeitgeist movies out the rear and distribute them all, and I don't even care. They bring their I own know, CD. I know, I wanted to thank you for that because um, your, your, your producer mentioned that to me, and that's awfully generous of you. Thank well, you no, it, it, is, it is libertarian. To allow people, I don't care if they're neocons, communists, whatever, everybody gets to have their say. That is what we are about. But... As these people come, as these movies are going out, you can understand why I would want to understand it. Because if you're successful and getting what you want, you know, it's going to affect me. And I need to understand what it is. Am I going to be supportive or in opposition? 
Well, thanks for coming on. It was very enlightening, and I'm glad that you were able to, to express yourself and share information about a movement that is going to have legs. And it's just going to be more and more understood as time goes on, and we will learn more about it here on Declare Your Independence. So thanks to Charlene B., Global Release Coordinator, Zeitgeist Moving Forward. It's Zeitgeist, Z-E-I-T-G-E-I-S-T, movingforward.com. Thank you, Charlene, and we'll be right back. Thank you, Ernest. We'll be right back at the top of the hour, and then at the bottom of the next hour, we have Bob Templeton, but I got a lot to share with you right after the news. You guys stay right there.